In this step, we're going to do some more interesting stuff around duplication, bringing in another mesh and some lighting things to create like a more interesting floor. We're going to create like a sub floor with some lights underneath. It's going to look very cool. So we'll start by importing another 3D asset. So we're going to go to import here. And the one that we want this time is called floor underscore mesh. Let's open that up. The settings are all fine, so we can click on import there. And then let's open that up in the static mesh editor. There it is. And I'm just going to dock it up here. And then this time the material I want is steel. M underscore metal steel. Try the burnished steel if, if you want. I didn't like it, but we'll do that one. So that looks pretty nifty. And that's everything for this one. So I can click on save. And we'll close it. And then I'm going to drop it in my level somewhere like so. And then I'm going to set it to 0, 0, 0, because that's just a good idea. And then I'll press F to frame it up like that. And one thing that I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to just scale it down, because this one looks better when it's tiled more, in my opinion. So I'm just going to put my scale tool on. I'm going to press R on my keyboard this time. And then I'm going to scale it down to 0 0.5 there. And you'll notice that I scaled from the center there when I did that. If I just undo it, if I scale on one of these axes, you see it just does it on one at a time, which I don't really want in this case. So I'll scale from the middle and it does both axes at once. So 0 0.5, and then I'm going to drop it right in the corner here. And then you'll notice we've got this little shimmering effect going on. That's because it's intersecting with the other floor. So I'm just going to drag it up by one. So that's 50 units because my snaps are still on 50. And then it's time to start duplicating this bad boy across the whole level. So that's the same as it was earlier. I'm going to hold Alt and Shift. And that's going to allow me to create a whole row of these pieces real quick. And then when I have a whole row of those pieces, I'm going to select them all up here. So click on the top one, hold Shift and click on the bottom one. I've then got them all. Change my view so that I'm over here. I can see what I'm doing. And then it's going to be shift and alt again. And I'm going to repeat this until I have an entire floor made out of these kind of great mesh uh, materially things. There we go. So let's see how that looks to the player. Ooh, very nice. Very industrial. So that's good, um, but the problem is, now that we've done that, even though there are holes in this floor, we can't see that there's anything below it, or it's very hard to see that there's anything below it. So in order to really highlight that fact, we're gonna drop some lights under the floor. It's gonna be very moody. So let's just press escape, and then we can have a look at what we do for that. Okay, so we're gonna create a point light this time, which kind of operates like a light bulb or like a sun, so light comes out in every direction, which is good. So I'm just going to go to my create quickly, go to lights, and I'm going to click on point light. That'll put it somewhere central. Here it is. I'm just going to bring it up like that. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit because what's important here, or one of the first things we're going to change, is these big circles here are how far that light will go. It's called the attenuation radius. And it's a bit technical, but when we do a light build later, if you have too many lights overlapping, Unreal Engine doesn't include them in the light build. So we need to keep that attenuation radius down to stop that from being a problem. The way that I'm going to do that is here's attenuation radius in my details panel. And I'm just going to drag the number until that comes down to about, let's call it 350. That looks good. And then what I want to do is place this under the floor. Now I'm going to struggle with this. I'll show you why. So if I drop this down, that's it kind of in line with the metallic floor. And if I drop it down again, it's now in line with the other floor. I need it to be in between these two points. And because the snaps are at 50, that won't happen. So I'm going to change the snapping to 10. And then I'm going to bring it down one, two, three times. And then it now fits between those two bits of floor. And I'll leave it on 10 for the time being, just while I'm fine-tuning the position of this. So I'm going to drop it in the back corner over here. And it's important to me that it sort of hits the walls a little bit. That's what makes it look cool. So we've got that. I want it to have a color. So we're going to set the color to red. And we're just going to 
dial that in a little bit. And I want to set the intensity of this to one. So it, the intensity is measured in candelas and it's currently set to eight. I'm going to set it to one and that just stops it from being too overpowering. So that's now pretty much done. The only other thing I need to change is it's casting shadows. So the floor is creating these ugly shadows here. And because this light's only for effect and it's not really meant to be a, a main light source in the level, we can turn shadows off and it'll still look fine. So while it's still selected, we're going to scroll down in the details panel. Here is casts shadows and we'll make that false. And you can see that those lines go away when we do that. So that's good. That's one point light. So we are now going to duplicate it. In fact, I'm just going to move it. I want it in this corner here first. Because I want a red one by the door, essentially. So I'm going to put one there. I'm then going to hold Alt on my keyboard to create a duplicate of that. And put that one over here near where the door is going to be. That's good. And then I'm going to duplicate it again. Alt and click and put it sort of where I started. But this one I want to have a blue tint to it. Just to create a bit of sort of visual contrast with the colours. Just being creative really. And then we'll do one more copy. So let's move it here and here. And I'm not going to keep them perfectly in line. Okay, let's see how this looks to the player. So press play. So yeah, now that looks good, you can see that the lights themselves are hitting the player character, which happens to be a bit reflective, which looks nice. And as we run around the room, we can see now that there's kind of something under those um, floor tiles, which feels pretty high-end, pretty sci-fi. So I'm happy with that as well. Okay, so that wraps up this step then. So we've looked at lighting again. We've changed some more settings. We've done the attenuation radius and the intensity. And in the next step, we are going to sort this gap out here and put a door frame in there. And we're going to do that by using some other bits and pieces creatively because this is quite a non-standard shape to fill. So we'll get that sorted there. So see you in the next step. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and enjoyable. If you're eager to dive deeper into game development with Unreal Engine 5, I have a fantastic recommendation for you. I highly recommend checking out the course Unreal Engine 5 The Complete Beginners Course by David Nixon on Udemy. It's a comprehensive and beginner-friendly course that covers all the essential aspects of working with Unreal Engine 5. I personally found it to be an excellent resource and I'm sure you'll benefit from it too. Check it out by following my link in the description below. Once again, thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.